so long we've been here we've been trying to break hi there did you know it is important or it is possible to have fun and learn at the same time welcome to another fun decative series of the springboard hangout where we fuse education and fun together my name is comfort okran we started a series on falling in love and when you hear the falling in love is all about red is all about you know the jive that you get you know and that kind of stuff but we started with the basics and we learned about how to love ourselves and we realized in that session last week that when you love yourself you are able to um see who you are in your entirety and appreciate you for what you have and take both the good the bad and the ugly and enjoy life tonight we are going to talk about loving others and we learn with how to le li live with others to have an essentially and happy life our guest today is very compassionate she is he is also very passionate about teaching others or teaching people about the love language and so help me say welcome to Amos Kelvin and then he's very very famous and you know that um, do, stay, do share with us what you'd like to learn from Amos in this particular um, um, edition how to live with others how to enjoy how to even if someone is really really getting on your nerves how to calm your nerves down and still learn to live with that person. For you out there, can you let us know where are you watching us from and let's give us a shout out. And we have a special exercise for you. When we share that exercise, do give us that information and just share the, 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 the names so we can appreciate those that you, you write in, 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 the, in the chat box. And also, if there's someone that you think would learn some tips about how to love others, loving the, themselves and loving others do give the person a shout and say hey come to the springboard hangout because we are going to hang out and have fun we will be right back when we return we will get this conversation on the on the on the, on the dial don't go anywhere <laughs> I'm 
New York to rent a car. I need a car in 15 minutes. Hi, I'm Jake, Jake Morris, and I travel globally. But when I'm in Ghana, York's Rent-A-Car is my reliable choice for safety and comfort on the road. York's Rent-A-Car provides comprehensive logistic services to mainly blue chip companies as well as individual clients. At a time we needed a car rental service and York's fitted in very well by our standards. Their services is top notch. Drivers are on time. It was beautiful to see them behind the wheels. And any time they pick up a guest, the guests were very, very happy. Already? Excellent. York's Rent-A-Car provides services and expertise that include meet and greet services at the airport, car rental, driver personal outsourcing, and vehicle detailing. Go, what, what's the problem? With you, I told you, York's Rent-A-Car delivers world-class service to its customers, having their highest safety and comfort in mind. So watch you. Go over to open for him. York's Rent-A-Car runs 24-7 operations where customers can make car reservations and inquiries of our services online and also call our hotline. Welcome back to the Springboard Hangout, our fundicative program where we learn and have live, learn how to live fun-filled lives. Um, as we said, today we are talking about falling in love, and today we are looking at loving others. And we have in the studio a certified life coach, a youth minister, a healthy homes advocate has worked with the Pentecost University as well as the Pentecost Church for over 16 years and addresses different corporate groups like Stanley and Absa Bank and so on and so forth. He has been named as one of the top 100 speak speakers in Africa. And this year was nominated under the Motivation, Leadership and Religion category of the Millennium Excellence Awards. Shall but more MB. <laughs> Kelvin, Pope Pastor Kelvin, or Sir Kelvin, welcome to the Springboard thank you, Hangout. Thank you, thank it's you. It's definitely an honor to have it you is, here. It is, it is an honor <laughs> sitting next to you. <laughs> I'm inhibited. <laughs> exactly. I mean, here we know, I mean, we just have fun and just take the conversation as it is. Yeah. And today we are talking about a very important topic. Certainly. Yes, love <laughs> and love and love. Today we are loving Others. others. Mm. Okay, so let's, from, from your perspective, what is love? Well, somebody once said that love is a feeling you feel you have never felt before mm -hmm. to define love. Mm -hmm. So in discussing love, there's a component that is a feeling. There's a component which is a behavioral pattern. There's a component which is values. So, so when feeling, you put feelings... Mm -hmm behavior, values. Yeah. So if you want to measure love being extended to you, there's a part which is warmth, which is a feeling you are going to have. A feeling of belonging, a feeling of acceptance is there. Um, then there is also a behavior pattern. So the person will exhibit certain traits that will lead you to conclude that this individual is in love with you. And then because they love you, there are certain values that they need to exhibit. For instance, they do away with hypocrisy, so they are not double-faced. Mm -hmm. They deal with the issue of honesty, transparency. These are things that would come simply because an individual shows love to you. A value system as loyalty. Are they loyal to you or they are trans breakers? So you have these kinds of uh, uh, parameters that you can use to evaluate love. I see. So here you are. We've, you've, you've given us a very beautiful definition about love, being a feeling, being a behavior, being a value. And um, but, um, today we are looking at this in relationship with others. others. Is it only these relationships? I mean, sometimes people will think that it's just only when you have a significant, significant other. But is it possible to just love any human being? I mean, like um, those who are in the control room controlling me like <laughs> puppets right now. Is it possible to love them as well? 
<laughs> well, I always say that love is best appreciated by those who don't deserve it. Okay. Now, so best it, appreciated by, by those, those who don't, who don't deserve, deserve it. it. Oh, but you know, they, they oftentimes, deserve it. They are lovely oftentimes people. Oftentimes in our mind, as mm -hmm. we relate with people, we feel they are undeserving of our love. Oh. And therefore, we deny them those things. Mm -hmm. Now, we must come to a point of appreciating that loving another is actually a human trait. Okay. Because to that extent, you're going to dignify them in how you speak to them, how you conduct yourself around them, and how you actually validate them or invalidate them. Because if you invalidate another, you end up dehumanizing them. But when you validate the person, you elevate them to the status in which you find yourself. So the maxim of love your neighbor as yourself begins to find expression in what you're doing. Do to others how you would want others to treat you. So in loving others, it is practically impossible to love others when you hate yourself. Could you repeat? It is practically impossible to mm -hmm. love others when you hate yourself. So definitely where we started from, loving ourselves, loving myself, is the, is the best place to have started. Exactly. That's what the Grecians call philosophical love. Mm -hmm. Philosophical love is love for self. Unfortunately, people tend to confuse that with selfishness. Okay. Okay. They are not the okay. same. They are not the same. No, 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 no. Self-love is that you are preserving yourself, you are respecting yourself, you are treating yourself with regard so that nobody takes you for granted, okay. nobody derides you, mm -hmm. or treats you as though you are nothing. Okay. okay. So you actually develop a certain insulation okay. to protect yourself from danger, from harm, and from reckless actions. Okay. You see, so when you have that, it's philosophical love. It is not selfishness. Selfishness is when you become an opportunist and everything must be <laughs> at your beck and call. It must be, I mean, either you were the one who did it or nobody else could do it. So you value yourself beyond what is reasonable. Okay, okay, okay. So what you're saying, from, if I'm hearing you right, self-love is, is beneficial. Yes. It is not the type that is asked to um, um, exclude everybody apart from you but it's it's one that looks out for you and then looks out for you exactly with relation to others exactly you you will protect yourself you don't throw yourself in harm's way and therefore you would also know put somebody in harm's way Fantastic. it's empathy okay okay so you're hearing with the ears of others feeling with the heart of others and doing what others would wish done to them so kelvin um help me help me here um if i i heard you say empathy and when i heard empathy it kind of took me a little bit to that sometimes people say emotional intelligence that mm. aspect of emotional does any 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 does emotional intelligence play any role in loving others you see the the concept of emotional intelligence is to help you to be able to gauge situations mm -hmm. and determine the appropriate response mm -hmm. to those situations so that your response is not an overkill when a person is emotionally intelligent they are literally saying, I'm in control of how I express my emotions. So you're not going to be the one who says, you made me do it. Okay. So an emotionally intelligent person practices what is called a second response. So the first thing is the reaction that comes. Somebody does something to you. You defer action or you promptly respond. Now, an intelligent person at the emotional level is able to make a determination must I respond now or defer action? Okay. And the one a... who is impulsive will just react and say, you made me angry. But the emotionally intelligent person says, I chose to be angry. I chose to be angry. And so when I chose to be angry, I chose the response which is appropriate with the anger. It reminds me of this, this verse in the Bible that says that, Answer a fool, answer not a fool according, according to, to his folly. His folly then yes. the very next verse says that answer, <laughs> answer a fool, a fool. <laughs> according to his folly. <laughs> so yes. The less he thinks himself wise. <laughs> so then an emotionally intelligent person exactly. will, 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 you choose. will choose yeah, which response, response yes. because the person acted out of quote unquote ignorance. ignorance. The person didn't know. 
and you beat the person up. The per you may you may you may spoil the person for some time yeah. because the person was just didn't just didn't know exactly. Some of the people are even unaware of what they were doing. They were unaware in the first place. But if the person did it intentionally, and the person I mean, thinks he was being wise, if they did it intentionally, you also intentionally respond. Hey, hey, and your intentional response will be a far more intelligent one than theirs, isn't it? Definitely. You know, so, so if the person unintelligently behaves, mm -hmm. your intentional response is that I would choose to be intelligently responsive and not be reactive to the situation. Okay. You know, that's what Steve Covey in The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People will say. First seek to understand, then be understood. Yeah. Why is okay. it so? It's so important because it's, it's, it's a response that you're giving to something. Now, sometimes what people do is that they respond and then later sit back and regret their response because okay. they realize that the response is not commensurate to the action yeah. to which they were responding. Okay. I see. I have Kojo Asaribwedu, who is watching from Tantra Hill in Accra. Kojo, thank you and welcome to the Springboard Hangout. And Ohima Frimpoma is also watching from Dan Soman. And then Silas Diapim says that my favorite counselor, Charlie. The fans are flowing. <laughs> Messy. Messy on my head. <laughs> okay. So then... If we, we've looked at love, we've looked yeah. at um, um, what, what it means, we've looked at it at, at, the, at the emotional intelligence level, I want to find out. Um, I think it's a... But uh, who is other? Well, other persons will be persons who are not you. Mm -hmm. So okay. like, other could be your colleague in the office, mm -hmm. a neighbor, um, a relative, a friend, a schoolmate... Uh, somebody you met casually, a stranger, if you like. Now, that person expects you to behave in a certain way towards them. Now, that behavioral pattern is actually hinged on your value systems. Okay. Now, whatever you do would leave a certain impression of you on them. Could you repeat that? Whatever you do to that person mm -hmm. will leave an impression on them. Okay. Now, that impression is what they carry, and then they have to interpret, could this be love or could it be hatred or contempt being extended to me? Now, when they make that determination, it's beyond your capacity. Okay. At best, what you want to do is to explain what you did. But their interpretation lives with them. It is their own, not yours. So we all need to be careful when it is that we are relating with other persons. And these persons may be older than you or younger than you are, or maybe your age mates. Okay. They may be advantaged far more than you or disadvantaged than you are. So your treatment of them will give them an inkling into your ability to love mm -hmm. and not love. Okay. 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 So the other could be anybody. The other could be anybody. anybody. How you relate anybody. to the person and the kind of impression that you leave exactly. with the other person. For instance, you go to the bank, yeah. ATM. You are there and you want to cash from the ATM. And the security officer was there. He didn't have any courteous you know, attitude towards the person. You, you, you looked at them as though they didn't exist. Now, what you should ask yourself is that, touch wood, if you slipped and fell, you'll be the person to come to your rescue, more often than not. Yes. But what we do is that because of the nature of their vocation, people have tended to look down upon them. Yeah. You see, so we're actually picking and choosing whom Ooh. we extend courteous attitude towards, which is an emotional expression. And it's also a behavioral pattern and caught in a certain value system. So then, so here we talk about respect. What other values or what other ways can people show respect or can people show love to others? Now, for instance, you have a colleague who is celebrating the birthday or something, mm -hmm. an anniversary or significant event in their life. Can you send them a word? a telephone call, a text message. 
something to show that you acknowledge that they have this day. Okay. Especially if you knew about it. Okay. More often than not, you see, somebody expects that that is done to them. But they are hesitant or reluctant doing it for other persons. Because they are individuals whose understanding of love is when they feel affirmed. Okay. So what is it in them that you can affirm? It could be the way they carry themselves. It could be something they are very good at. It could be something that they have tried, tried, tried and failed, but they have succeeded all of a sudden. Can you affirm them for what you see? So affirmation is a, yeah, is, is, is a language of love. Yeah, it's a language of, of love. Is, is a, yes. well, what other language for is that? Others, for others, it's a gift. It's a gift. A token, something to give to a friend on that day. Some people would actually interpret that to mean you, you love them. Others too, it's a touch. But this is tricky in the sense that um, in the wake of um, COVID, <laughs> not only COVID, but, but harassment okay, and all that. The Me Too movement, Me Too movement and, and so on and, and so, so forth. Touch becomes a far more complex thing yeah. to, to, yeah. to, to yeah. pursue. Yeah. At this, it's also time. Make time for somebody. You know, there are individuals who create time for you. There are others too who think that you have to buy their time. Okay. Now, which kind of person are you dealing with? So those are things that people would use as a barometer to assess whether or not there is love or not. Okay. And it takes you into many, many, many areas because when people receive those things that you're giving to them, they look at you and they say, oh, this fellow loves me. Mm. Mm. The words mm. you speak. Mm. Are you generous with words or you are sarcastic? Are you demeaning? Because some people put a lot of weight on the words you speak. Yeah. But for others, no, they don't care. I mean, really, especially cholerics. Cholerics don't care. Whether you say it or you don't say it, they don't mind because they are not dependent on what you say. Okay, all right. You know? I see. So <clears throat> this, is, this is so, you were talking about daily practice of loving yeah. actions, like looking at people, maybe even talking to, to somebody and looking at the person in the eye and mm. affirming the person. Eye contact. Or um, people, the way people walk in and you compliment them on their, 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 their dress, you know. Mm. Like, for instance, today you're, 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 you're <laughs> day for more. I have to get the tailors <laughs> this thing. And then maybe send, 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 send. And, oh, guys, what do you think? Do you see he's looking really good in, in, the, in, the, in the outfit? I like, I like the buttons on the shirt. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, really Thank nice. You. So I'm grateful. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm showing you love. <laughs> <laughs> you see, there's an element of love which is innocent. Okay. And there's an element of love which is not that innocent. Right. Now, sometimes people use love to exploit others. That kind of love is not innocent. Oh. The one that a person extends to you unconditionally and not looking for any reward in return is what I call the innocent kind of love. Is that the type of love where, I mean, this one, I have to, I'm going to the Bible a little, where, 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 where Jesus said that if you do this to the least of my brethren. The least. The least. And the word is the least. The least. So where you extend hmm. love to anybody or anyone around you who, quote unquote, you may be bigger than, mm -hmm. you, you, big obo, but you are bigger than the person, hmm. but you, you extend um, compassion, you just get human feeling. That's, that's a very important bit, especially when you harp on the subject of empathy. Because in empathy, there is consideration. There is care. There is fellow feeling, as mm -hmm. you spoke mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. So I am higher than A, but A is higher than C. How do I relate with A, and how does A relate with C? It becomes unfortunate when I relate with A, whom I am quote unquote in ranking higher than, and yet they relate with C in a shabby manner. So it's they, painful. It's painful. It's painful. You mentioned earlier a little bit about the personality, uh, personality choleric. Yeah, That's the, the choleric personality trait, type. Yes. yes. And and so just have just a little bit about mm. that. And in this relationship where we have. Uh, uh, is it an equilateral triangle? Well, I, don't know, I mean, I release it, but then you, you know, 
how does the various personality types mm. play out in this kind of all right okay yeah. so for instance you have the sanguine okay the sanguine personality type is the talking type so conversations mean a lot to a sanguine person and the more you make time for conversations the better they feel that you love them now if you look at the phlegmatic the phlegmatic requires patience because they are slow in taking decisions, they are very comfortable with their space, and they move according to their own pace. They don't want to be rushed or hurried into any decision. Now, if you give them that attitude, they feel respected, feel on it, and also interpret that to mean love. Now, if you deal with a choleric, cholerics are not relational necessarily, and so they are task-oriented, so service is important. You serve them, you do things, around them, you provide a helping hand and all that. And then they want to achieve goals. Can you help them leverage on that to achieve a certain end? They will feel loved. Then you come to the melancholy. The melancholy wants things done right, properly. So they are the prim proper people and tends to be a bit straight jacketed. They're difficult to live with because everything has to be in line. They must fall in pleasant places. I tell you. <laughs> Where there's the line must be sharp. Exactly. It must, it must, exactly. There mustn't be any deviation exactly. from the path. Exactly. Exactly. And, and they don't easily succumb to change, rapid changes. Yeah. yeah. Because they want things complying to set what standards. What they've known. So if, if you do that, they feel fulfilled and therefore can connect with you. Now there's also another personality type known as the supine personality. The supine is actually an aggregate of all four in equal proportions, if you do the calculations, 25, 25. Oh, so for that. instance, this person is difficult to predict them. Where he or she is going. Where they are. Because almost all four personality types find expression in this person in equal proportion. Please make life easy for Those us. Those are the individuals who are described as selfless persons. Supine means they are lying yeah. this way, looking up. Yeah. So they lie down for you to work on them. Yeah, but you see, but if you have, if 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 you, what I'm getting from what what you've, you've just talked about is the fact that you must at, attempt to know what kind of other so you are dealing with. So the other person is definitely going to be different from you. Yeah. In a few on, on a few occasions, you may have somebody who thinks and behaves and acts and processes like you. It's yeah. easier. But it's ironical to know that when somebody is like you, oftentimes we can't stand them. <laughs> so for instance, a parent who is choleric sees a son or daughter who is choleric. And that's when they call them the harshest. <laughs> because they see themselves in the child. And relating with them becomes almost predictable. Because the child can predict you and you can predict the child. <laughs> For us, in some instances, the differences between us becomes the point of disturbance. I see. So anyone who wants to love others must understand that they have strengths and they have weaknesses. Okay. That's the starting point to be able to relate with others. Starting point to relate to others, know that people they have, have strengths, strengths, they have, they have weaknesses. weaknesses. And therefore we... You must learn to live within both spaces. Because sometimes, you see, the, when the weaknesses show up, we are harsh with our critique or condemnation of them. We're always waiting for the strength because it's cozy, it's cool, <laughs> <laughs> effortless. It, it doesn't rub you in wrong places. <laughs> you <know>? I see. <laughs> that's why when people gravitate towards their strength, they become icons. Mm, we okay. celebrate them. Yeah, yeah. But when you drift to your weakness, you become a bad case. That is why you're a good counselor because you, you, are, you, you are interested in others and you keep helping them. And that is why Nana Ebo Kobna Bejuro, Bejura, Bejura, Bejaro, watching us from Asim Fusu says that interesting discussions, big up team. And then Adum Boche says that interesting topic. Adum, I agree. Do you have any questions that you would like to hear, get from um, Kelvin? Kindly send us your, your message and let's go. Um, you know, 
There's, I, I want us to read a scripture before we go. Okay. And the, the, because you're going for a quick break when we return. Mm -hmm. The scripture says that, Judge not that you, that you be not judge, judged. For with what judgment you judge, you be judged. And with the measure um, you use, it shall be measured back to you. Why do you look at the speck <laughs> in your brother's eye and do not consider the plank, yeah. as the guy will say, the cho, <laughs> in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye yeah. and look, there's a plank in your own eye. Hypocrite. <laughs> you first remove the plank from your own eye, then you be you you would clearly see to remove the speck from your mm. brother's eye. Mm. Mm. So here <laughs> we have conflict. Conflict. And we have where somebody's judging someone mm. else. Mm. When we come back, we'll look like at difficult relationships and how we will handle those. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, we've come to a very crucial point in this in this um, um, conversation and you 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 have to hang around to 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 hear the rest of it don't go anywhere we are going for the game changer when we come back we'll continue the conversation pink sunflowers green sun cristiano ronaldo in a sky blue manchester city jersey some things just don't sound right so when rumours broke of a transfer to City, United swooped in and signed Ronaldo instead, setting up a homecoming fans had craved for the last 12 years. As fans went mental on social media and crashed the United site, sports writers penned their think pieces. Some called it a sentimental transfer driven by nostalgia. Others speculated that it would make young stars like Mason Greenwood regress. And although these are valid concerns, I have a slightly different opinion. Today... Our game changer is asymmetric opportunity. An asymmetric opportunity is one where the potential rewards far outweigh any risks. And there are three key reasons why signing Ronaldo meets this criteria. Number one, commercial appeal. Signing Ronaldo raised United's share price by 9%, a whopping 300 million. Two, team morale. Ronaldo is a notoriously hard worker who can drive his teammates to excel. And three, star power. In all the excitement, it's easy to forget that Ronaldo is one of the best players of all time. Most players peak around 28, but at 36, the five-time Ballon d'Or winner was Serie A's top scorer. Oh, and by the way, Chelsea signed the runner-up Romelu Lukaku for seven times more than United paid for Ronaldo. So will United's £12 million gamble lead to their first trophy in five years? Nobody knows. But by signing Ronaldo, United have placed their bet. Let's see if they hit the jackpot. This has been The Game Changer with Jojo Okran. Have a phenomenal week. Welcome back. And today we are talking about loving others, continuing our falling in love series. And before we went on the break, we were, we were discussing, we had looked at love, we had looked at uh, that as a behavior, as a feeling, and as a, as a value system. We've also looked at the fact that um, the way we react to, to other, others, the way we, we look at the personalities we are dealing with, and that helps us, that will help guide uh, um, the way we, 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 we interact with them. So following then, then I asked him a difficult question before we went on the break, and he's coming to, to, to join that with a game changer. Mm. Because Lukaku, hey, sorry, I said Lukaku, well, for Lukaku, who wants uh, Chelsea? No, we don't want Chelsea. Ronaldo is coming to, to, to Manchester, yay! And, and, and we really are looking forward to this one, you, so you know where I am, I'm biased. We are really looking forward to winning the trophy this year. That is the my you fans. Pa. My you fans, please give me a shout out over there. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so what I'm what I'm asking is that Ronaldo would need that kind of working with others to achieve for us to be to enable us to achieve that. However, if there are people there who have planks in their eyes and they want to remove the speck from other people's eyes, how do they? How 
do they work? How do we stop ourselves from judging others in such situations? Well, we're living in a generation where the concept of judge me not is a big one. Mm. So if even you give feedback, it mm -hmm. is considered as judge. Okay. So this is how I feel about what you may have done mm -hmm. or what you may have said. Mm -hmm. Now, when I give you that feedback, do you take it as feedback to work on or you take it as condemnation to feel guilty about? Now, the particular incident or case you cited of Ronaldo, mm -hmm. I mean, in any situation, you may have people who would look at you dismissively because they think that you may be party spoiler. You, you, may, you may take attention from them. Ah. They may have been the engine room of the team and then all of a sudden you come in. So rivalry okay. comes into the fall. So you have those individuals who feel threatened by their position and they would overreact. Okay. They may not cooperate with you because yeah. ideally on a team, cooperation is required because yeah. the philosophy of a game is that we are better together instead of good alone. Yeah. If you want to shine and outshine everybody, then they will find ways of undermining your capacity to deliver. So here you are a playmaker, you are goal scorer. Mm -hmm. They're not going to give you the ball because for as long as you don't get the ball, and we've seen that in our black stars in the past where some individuals were said to have conspired <laughs> not to give the ball to somebody who was a good goal scorer. So and what could, happened to us? Ah, you know, we all suffer. <laughs> we, we all suffer. suffer you know? So in dealing with other people, it's important to realize that conflict is a natural occurrence in life. Okay. Okay. Why do I say that? Because in you, there is conflict. Mm. It's called the intrapersonal conflict. Intrapersonal? Intrapersonal conflict. Not inter? Not inter. Okay. That is the conflict within you mm -hmm. as a person. Okay. Then that finds expression in the interpersonal conflict. Right, right, right. Where people are unable to manage their own intrapersonal conflict it shows in their interpersonal relationships and the conflicts that ensue thereof. Wow. So there's a need for each one of us when we wake up in the morning to ask ourselves, what conflicts am I dealing with? <laughs> you mean dealing when with... I wake up from bed? <laughs> <laughs> yes, each one of us. You must pay attention to the kind of conflicts you have. So you have a bill to pay. Mm -hmm. You have an assignment to deliver. Mm -hmm. You have some responsibility to carry out. Mm -hmm. Somebody, a meeting to attend. All those things tend to be very conflicting. <laughs> Especially when the time is not plenty. <laughs> exactly. So you, you woke up late. Instead of your you usual time, you had the alarm go off, but you never got out of bed. Meanwhile, you had pressed with time for a meeting. That, the stakes are high already. So, for instance, you come to the office space, if somebody does something small, it can trigger an explosion. Hey, volcano. You see, so the intrapersonal conflict, its impact is that it implodes in you if you don't manage it. So, you will be bearing the brunt of it. You'll mm -hmm. be hurting. Mm -hmm. You'll be brooding over it. Mm -hmm. But where it is the interpersonal conflict, then it explodes. So it either hits you in the face or hits another person. So there's a need for each one of us to look at our own conflicting situations. Because sometimes the other party had not done anything whatsoever to warrant your anger, to warrant the words you used. You know, those unprintable words, words <laughs> that you may not be able to retract or delete because there's no delete button in the air. No, no. And no. yet these words mean much to people. Yeah. Now, so there's a need for us to look at that. Sometimes people try to avoid conflict, but it's impractical because mm. life is a conflicting journey. It's a conflicting journey. It is a conflicting <laughs> journey. And if people are religious, they will tell you sometimes there's a conflict between your spirit and your flesh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they the they Paul, war Paul, against each Paul other. Paul said it so, yes. so eloquently. Yes, they yeah. war against each other. Yeah. Sometimes your thoughts are going wayward, going berserk. And you know that where your thoughts are heading, that's not what your spirit desires to be. 
You need to so pull there's got to be some arrest yeah. in that area because the, the spirit, the soul, and the body operate on a majority rule principle. So if your spirit and your soul are lined together, your body has no choice but to follow suit. Mm. It matches the same so you way mean, if your you soul. Mean there's there's democracy in the body. Oh yes, I mean okay. there's okay. a majority rule system there. Yeah, okay. okay. That's why you must work to bring into alignment your spirit and your soul, so your body will comply. Then okay. you'll be able to do what Paul says: I buffet my body into submission. Why? Because his cognition is ready for that. His spirit is ready for it. Okay. But where the flesh and the soul gang up, your spirit will be weak. Mm. Mm. It doesn't matter how fiery you are, your mm. spirit will be muted. <laughs> so you'll be, you'll be, say, a Christian, but a carnal Christian, because you'll be walking in the inklings of the flesh. Forgive. Josephine, I'm going to say that, Josephine, you are most welcome tonight as <laughs> well, as usual. I just joined and I'm loving it. And I'm a Lewisi. I mean, how? He says that I love this. Governor, Governor, Governor Humphrey. Hey, good to see you. You promised that you'd be here tonight and you are here tonight. You're saying we are better together instead of go good alone. Nice. And you know, um, Am Am Amoa Br Brimpon says that Elvin, Elder Kelvin, Amos Annan. <laughs> oh, this man. I have loved him. Hey, Charlie. Sister, I have loved him since Wesley Girls High School. Oh, he came yeah. twice to speak to us. And on Legon campus, I went to every seminar that had him on the program. He has used so much wisdom. Oh, this is really, really kind words. Thank you. Thank you for affirming I'm humbled. Uh, Elder. <laughs> Thanks to Mrs. Jokoto. She made me go there. <laughs> oh, okay. I see. Mrs. Jokoto, thank you for, 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 for giving our young ladies such, such, such wisdom at the, at, I mean, at very yeah. formative part yeah. of their lives. And so it has guided a lot of them. And um, um, Eunice is one such person. Eunice, you are blessed, totally blessed. I, I joke, Kachi, uh, say Cephas, is saying that my you all the way, Charlie. The, the color is red, Charlie. I, 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 I dig the thing, Cho. Okay, so, um, Essien, Nib Essien has this question mm. How can you love someone who doesn't love him or herself? How can you love someone who doesn't love him or herself? Well, their lack of love for themselves is even the more reason why you must love them. Because like I said earlier, love is best appreciated by those who seem not to deserve what mm. we are offering them. Mm. So this is a person who has not learned to love themselves and therefore maybe putting themselves in harm's way mm. or predisposing themselves to danger mm. or death in some extreme cases. My responsibility then becomes someone who shows them extra what they don't have. Okay. You see, oftentimes people say, I love you 50%, you also love me 50%, and it becomes 100%. <laughs> but you will be amazed to know that this person may not have experienced what is known as love from their formative years. Okay. So the building block of their life is not founded on love. Okay. And therefore, they harshly treat themselves, they disregard themselves, they are not kind to themselves. And so it is easy for such a person to extend the same behavior, the same attitude, and the same value system to other people. Yeah. Those yeah. of us who understand that we must love others in spite of, despite the situation, must not conditionalize our love. You see, it is an easy path to travel when you are loving conditionally. So Brad. you do this, Brad. I will love you. Eh, because you must get, I mean, you can must get something in return. Hey, this one, the person, <laughs> the person is before, you know, the person is even abusing you and you, are, you, you will call, want us to continue loving those who abuse us. You see, what you don't have the latitude to do is to be filled with hatred. Yours is not a calling to retribution. You don't have the luxury to retaliate. 
I mean, especially if you're a religious person, vengeance is not yours. Yours is a duty to be generous. But you see, the person, the person did not only cut me in the traffic, mm -hmm. the person also went ahead after cutting me very sharply. The person decided to go very slowly. And then when I tried to overtake, the person actually also started speeding. And so, and the road was a one way, one, I mean, two way. So I couldn't over. I mean, the person was just being so irritable. Want they me may to continue? Be, they may be irritable, uh -huh. but are you also going to respond irritably? Or you're going to choose your response? That is not going to be like a payback to them. Because the moment your response becomes a payback to them, that is vengeance. That is, you do me, I do you. Tit for tat. Uh. Now, we want to avoid that situation. We and do? this is where emotional intelligence comes to the fore. Each one of us need to respond to situations with bated breath. Bated breath. We oftentimes are too spontaneous, too reactionary, too impulsive. And anybody who does that, later on, when you find somebody who has a high view of you around, you regret your response. True. Because you are caught pants down. And are worse. So basically, you're telling us that number one, we must look at ourselves and find out what battles we are re starting exactly, the day with. Exactly, exactly. And then become more, more um, um, reflective. Become and, aware of your own situation. Yes, and reflect and not be impulsive. Impulsive. Because you can choose between reaction and response. Reaction is actually based on what has been done to you. Now, response is what has been done to me. I have reviewed it, and this is what I deem as an appropriate response. That could include confronting the person. Yeah. But I learned a word in Kenya one time when I'd gone there for training. He said, care front. Care, care front. Care enough to face it. Be frontal care with the person. Care enough to be upfront front to yes. the person. You know, because that's different from confronting something. Okay. Oftentimes, when people are going to confront, you see there's agitation, there's hostility, there is some turbulence in them. But when you care enough to be frontal with someone, like this guy, he drove on the shoulders of the road. I just stopped there and said, Chief, are you doing the right thing? He's an <laughs> expert. <laughs> and I asked him, would you do this in your country? You know what he said? He gestured at me and said, look at your people going. They're all there. Why? Do you stop me? I said, no, you can't do this in your country. Why would you do it in Ghana? He said, okay, 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 okay. So and he, saw, he, he saw that I was going to take my phone to capture him, his number plate and what have you. And then he said, okay, okay, it's all right, I understand. And then he, <laughs> he, went away. he moved away. You know, so sometimes <laughs> you need to face the person, but you're not facing them in a hostile fashion. Sorry. Okay, all right. Adokache... Sefa says, hi, mom. Thank you, um, this thing. And then As Asari says that, isn't it better to avoid your enemies or potential enemies instead of loving them? Asari. It Asari is far, it's sorry, far better for somebody no. to see you as an enemy than you seeing someone as an enemy. Okay. You shouldn't okay. have enemies. I mean, you shouldn't have enemies. If Asari. you're a religious person, you shouldn't have enemies. Okay. Because if you come at empty with anybody, all the time there's going to be acrimony. Right. So to the three, three quick questions. Mm. How do, when do we say, I'm sorry? Um, how, what's the best way? When do we say, I'm sorry? And what's the best way to go about apologizing? Well, to say, I'm sorry, you have to first make a determination of what has happened. Okay. The circumstance, the setting, the passing, all those things must come into consideration. Hmm. Now, you must understand that saying sorry does not diminish your value. It does not reduce you as a person. And therefore, saying sorry is not you. It's, it's not personified. Hmm. So it's an action you carry out, but it is not you. Now, sometimes people are not able to do that because they assume that it is them. If I say sorry, 
then I diminish in value or essence. And that's not the way we should look at it. So a person stepped on your toe or you stepped on someone's toe. Can you say sorry? Why wouldn't you say sorry? If you are not able to say sorry for stepping on another person's toe, it is indicative of the value system in you that you have not been properly brought up. Forgive. You lack the basic courtesies of human interaction. And therefore, you have mounted a high horse, poking your nose in the sky and thinking that you are the best thing that ever happened. Excellent. And the danger is that such persons, anybody who offends them, they are not only going to require you, they're actually going to scold you to say, I am sorry. <laughs> 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 That's the so, irony. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I heard somewhere, mm. somebody was saying that this, this, um, if you come across crocodiles, mm. don't um, teach the crocodile how to brush the teeth. Otherwise, mm. you, lose, you may lose your arm. Um. Leave the crocodile alone and walk away mm. in loving others. Can we ever come to the situation where we see that as for this particular person, it's a crocodile, <laughs> so I need to walk away? Well, I mean, there are certain individuals who are difficult to love, but admittedly, but they are not impossible to love. You see, sometimes we forget that something being difficult is not the same as being impossible. There are things that inhibit, it, inhibit or constrain us from loving this person. That's where the difficulty lies. Maybe they have repeatedly been doing the same thing and you've warned them severally. You've registered your protest. No, they are toxic. They are toxic. I mean, toxicity can be found in treasure tanks. And it is to the degree of the toxicity that we can bear, which is the issue. You know, a few years ago, the Lord laid on my heart to address that issue. And that was a topic, um, toxicity in treasure tanks. Because I've seen people who are very good, very nice, very caring, very loving, but they emit certain toxic traits. And so I have a duty to help people to understand that you and I can emit toxic, toxic substances. Now, sometimes people cannot bear with your toxicity. But in relating with others, for instance, you have a colleague in the office, you're all supposed to achieve a certain corporate KPI together, and yet they are toxic. You can't ignore them, you can't avoid them. So how are you going to live with this individual? You've got to find ways of being courteous on account of KPIs that have been set by the corporate entity. Otherwise, you're going to get a query. Mm -hmm. This topic <laughs> is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad that we had the opportunity to hang out with Kelvin. Kelvin, we've come to the end of today's oh, discussion. So. Well, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any comments, any closing comments before we wrap up? Well, I would want to say thank you for the honor of bringing me to this rich show hangout. Um, you and I are better doing a great job, and your team. I commend all of you for what you're doing. And those who are listening and watching, I want to say that loving is an invitation to labor. If you're not ready to laboriously work your way through loving others, there's no way you can love them. And also remember, love is best appreciated by those we in our construction think they don't deserve. May we go out there and love because it is the way of living. We have no other way out. Let's go out there and love because there's no way other way out. And I'd like to finish this, clue, this by, by this scripture. 1 Corinthians 13, 4. It says that love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It is not puffed up. It does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, 
does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. We have had that second look at love and we're looking at loving others. And this has been the most amazing program. If you would like to have a real look at this, remember to join us on ETV on Sunday evening at 5 p.m. Additionally, I would encourage you, join Albert at 7 p.m. on either um, the, the, our Facebook page or YouTube as he delves into different topics in the engine room. You can get a repeat of that on Joy Prime at 5 p.m. on Monday until we come your way again. It has been a privilege being on this session with you and it has been a privilege having the one and only Elder Kelvin Amos Anna here with us. We are so grateful. God Amen. bless you bless richly you for being with bless us. You. And to the technical team, you rock. You are the best. Good night. Enjoy a fantastic week, folks. And so we'll come away again next week. I love you. Mm -hmm.